All right, so it is now 8.01, so I'm going to go and get started. Uh, first of all, for all of the attendees, I want to thank you for joining Free Talk Live with this webinar event with Caleb Jones of Alpha Male 2.0. Um, I'm Roger Paxton. I'm a co-host of Free Talk Live and the host of the Lava Flow podcast. So keep in mind, guys, there will be a Q&A toward the end of this webinar, last 15 or 20 minutes. So make sure to get those uh, questions into the Q&A section that's in the Zoom software to get your questions in now. The sooner you get your questions in, the more likely uh, they already get answered because we will answer them uh, likely in the order we get them. Now I want to introduce to you guys Caleb Jones. Caleb is the founder of Alpha Male 2.0. He's also the author of the book The Unchained Man and other books. He's also a blogger, a podcaster, and a business and dating coach, and he does it all Alpha Male 2.0 style. Alpha Male 2.0 includes proven real-world field-tested strategies and tactics that have allowed thousands of men all over the world to design a freedom-based lifestyle where they don't have to worry about money or sex. With Alpha Male 2.0, you can learn how to double or even triple your income while increasing your time off and live and travel anywhere that you want. You can also date women in ways where you are still free to live your life and do whatever you want. You can live the greatest, freest lifestyle available to the modern day man that of the Alpha Male 2.0. Caleb, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm looking forward to what you have to say. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Thank the you very much. Yours. Thanks, what a great intro. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, he's right, my name is Caleb Jones. I'm a business consultant and entrepreneur. And um, I teach, one of the companies I have, this is one of them is, I teach a lifestyle design system called Alpha Male 2.0. And I'll give you an example of before I get into it, I'll give you an example of what you can do with this lifestyle. This is just my example. There are many examples I could give you, but I'll just give you mine because it's easiest because it's mine. So I'll cover my, and these are the two aspects of Alpha 2.0. I'll cover my financial life first, and I'll cover my, my woman life second because they're both critical. So my financial life first, uh, I make mid six-figure income. I have three small location independent diversified companies where I can make money completely location independent. So I can go wherever I want, live wherever I want, travel wherever I want, stay there for as long as I want. The money keeps coming in because my income is not locked into any one particular city or state or country or location. And I have some online companies and I have some offline companies. So it's not just online businesses. I'll talk about that a little bit in a second, but so it's both aspects of that. Um, even better, I only need to work one, five, 15 hours per week I kind of mapped this out a few months ago. I only need to work 15 hours a week to maintain that income. Wow. I don't work 15 hours a week. I work, I work every day. I love to work. I, I'm an excited guy. And I like to work. I like what I do. But if I wanted to, I could uh, work all day Monday, like put in a big 10-hour day on a Monday, work half the day Tuesday, and I'd be done for the rest of the week. I could take Wednesday off, Thursday off, Friday off, Saturday off, Sunday off, Friday, Saturday, 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 all the rest of the days of the week off. And that income would continue forever. It wouldn't grow, but it would continue. Wow. So part of this component is making a decent amount of money without having to work too hard. I'll talk mm -hmm. to that in more detail in a second. So that's my financial life. My woman life is a little more interesting. Well, I think it's both, they're both pretty interesting. So for the last, let's see, out of the last 13 years, the first 11 of those 13 years, I'm married today and I'll cover that in a second. The first from 2007 to about two, about two years ago, I was in long-term non-monogamous relationships with multiple women where I was dating and having sex with one woman and dating and having sex with other women. And all the women knew I was doing it and they continued to see me anyway because I didn't have to lie to them or cheat on them or any of that stuff. And these are long-term relationships that lasted many, many, many years on average. And some of these were casual relationships. Some of these were very serious relationships. Some of these were like hardcore girlfriend relationships. And if it matters to some of your older guys, 50% of these women are so, I tracked all this on spreadsheets, I still do. 50% of these women were 15, 20, even 25 years younger than me. Wow. And this is not sugar daddy dating or that stuff, although that's an aspect of that also as you get older. This is just normal dating where you meet a new woman and you get to a relationship with her very quickly without spending a lot of money. Now that was, um, that lasted about 11 years. I'm almost 50, so I decided to settle down. So today I am married, but it is the alpha male 2.0 version of marriage called the OLTR marriage. And it's a little different than the typical marriage. Two big differences. One is it is an open marriage where I'm allowed to have sex with whomever I want, whenever I want, without having to check with my wife. And I do, I do it whenever I want. It's not a monogamous marriage, it's an open marriage. That's the first aspect. The second aspect, 
and this is the less fun aspect, but it's important, is that unfortunately we live in an era where the real divorce rate with people getting divorced of the people who get married is north of 76%. So the odds are really good that if you get married, even if you do everything right and marry the perfect person, the odds are good that you'll probably get divorced at least some point down the road, even if you do everything right. So in my marriage, I have legal, logistical, financial, and international barriers between my money and her money. So if God forbid we ever got divorced, and I hope we don't, this is someone I love very much. I'd love to spend the rest of my life with this person. This is an amazing person. But if we ever got divorced, I wouldn't lose a single penny of my money. Uh, so not only am I still free as a married man, I am also protected as a married man. Because I know too many guys, and I was one of these guys many years ago where everything goes fine, you get married, and then you get divorced, and then you have financial problems that last many, many, many years. So I that's an, go ahead. Uh, just saying I've been there. So I understand it completely. Yes. Well, most men have been there and that's just the era in which we live in now. And that's just par for the course. And so yeah. if you're going to get married, if you're going to settle down, and I think you should eventually, especially if you're over the age of 35, I think that's very important. You need to structure it in a way where your freedom is very high, but your protection is also very high. You want both. Same thing with my business. I'll talk about in a second where I have not just one business, but I have three different companies in three completely different markets selling completely different things with different income streams to each market. So that way, if one business collapses, I'm upset, but I'm okay. The income keeps coming in and I can still pay my bills. Mm -hmm. So we're talking not only about freedom, but we're talking about protection and long-term stability. Right. So rolling into that, um, they've done this and they've done, they know from the studies, and you may know this from your personal experience, that as a man, generally speaking, there are exceptions, the more free you are in a typical day, which means you can wake up in the morning and do whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as it's not illegal or immoral and ethical, without having to check in with anybody. Mm -hmm. So that's a high degree of freedom. The higher freedom you have in your life as a man, the happier you tend to be. That's generally speaking. And if you have a lower degree of freedom, then your happiness tends to, over time, be lower. So it kind of follows like this. The freer you are, the happier you are, the less free you are, the less happy you are. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. And we're talking about men here. Women are different. Women follow a different life path than men. The psychology is different. We're talking strictly about guys. So now the one trick is sometimes you can have scenarios where you have a high degree of freedom and your freedom suddenly drops, but your, your happiness actually temporarily spikes and then goes down. For example, here's an easy example. Let's say you're a young single guy and you're out dating and having fun and getting laid and it's great. And then you meet a girl and then you get traditionally monogamously married and you have that wedding. And so when you get married in terms of your personal overall freedom as a man, if it's a traditional normal marriage, your freedom generally drops, right? And that might be okay for you, but your freedom goes down. Sure. Now, when you get married, does that mean your, your happiness goes down? No, what happens, and you've seen this happen many times and I, it's probably happened to some of you, when you get married, your happiness goes up. It's the greatest day of your life, your wedding and the honeymoon and everyone loves you and it's great. But then statistically speaking, and this is very statistical, this is all empirical data. What happens with most men, not all, but most, is that the happiness spikes and then slowly over a period of time, it might take three or four or five years, his happiness levels on a typical day drop to his new lower level of freedom. So instead of doing this, it does this, your happiness drops and your happiness, excuse me, your freedom drops, your happiness spikes, and then eventually goes down. So generally speaking, you will always follow, if you're the typical guy, and most guys are, and I am, your happiness will follow your level of freedom. Mm -hmm. So if your goal is long-term consistent happiness as a man, long-term meaning not just five or six years from now, but 25 plus years from now, what you've got to do is two things. First is you have to crank your level of personal freedom as high as you possibly can. I mean, we're libertarians. We talk about societal freedom. Mm -hmm. Alpha 2.0 is a version of taking that societal freedom and, and installing it into your life on a personal level. So you crank your level of freedom as high as you can. Then you take a hammer and a nail and you nail that level of freedom there so it never drops below a certain level, no matter what happens. Even if you go out of business, even if you decide you want to move to another country, even if you fall in love with a perfect woman who is not like the rest, no matter what, even if you want to have children, you can do all those things, but there are certain things you will do to never reduce your freedom, if that makes sense. That way, your happiness stays at a very high level. Right. Yeah. So the way you do that as a guy, if you visualize a motorcycle, this is the metaphor that I generally use, mm -hmm. your life as a man is a motorcycle. So that means you have two wheels and you have an engine. 
So the engine are the core important things like children, family, giving back, uh, spirituality, your physical health, the really important stuff. Okay, that's the engine, that's the core. But then you have two tires, you have two wheels on your motorcycle. And as a man, these two wheels are money and sex. And if you don't have a degree of money and sex in your life, then it doesn't help very much to have the great family life, the physical health and all that other good stuff. So I'll give you an example. Now, first, before I give you examples, you probably, if you're like most typical guys, most normal guys who went to the public school system and, you know, was societally conditioned, as soon as I say money and sex, there's a part of you that says, oh, money, oh, really, really? That's so shallow. What about religion? What about family? What about my wife? What about physical fitness? What about self-actualization? What about politics and giving back? And Right, so here's an example. Let's say you're on your motorcycle, you're driving down the street, you're driving on the freeway, and you have a problem with one of the tires. So it starts to fishtail, you pull over, you get out, and you start repairing that tire, okay? Someone walks by, he's walking his dog, and he looks at you, and he says, oh, you are so shallow. You're spending all this time working on the tire. The engine is more important than the tire. Why are you focused on the tire when the engine is far more important than the tire? And your answer would be, you're right. The engine is more important than the tire. But without two functioning tires on my motorcycle, the motorcycle doesn't go anywhere. So if you say having a family is more important than getting laid, yes, of course that's true. Being physically fit is more important than having a high income. Yes, of course that's also true. Physically healthy, yes, all true. But let me ask you a question. Let's say you have a perfect life, perfect family, you're making tons of money, you're physically fit, it's all great, and you haven't had any sex for two years. Are you happy? No, you're miserable. You're miserable. Even Absolutely. if everything else in your life is not only good, it's perfect. You're miserable. So switch it around. So now it's money. So now let's say you're having plenty of sex. You've got, you're married or you have this wonderful, perfect girlfriend. You've got children. If that's something you want, you, you know, you've got friends who love you. You've got hobbies you're really into. You, your, your spiritual life is great. Everything's great. You've made no money for two years. You don't have any money. Are you happy? No, because you've got bill collectors, you're worried about bills all the time, people try to help you, your self-esteem is in the toilet. So what you've got to do first is establish a baseline of money and sex, whether or not you think they're as important as those other things. Then once you have those two baselines, and we'll talk about baselines in a second, now everything else in your life has meaning and makes sense and can go forward because you have the solid baseline as a man of a certain amount of money and a certain amount of sex. So that's the, that's the concept we teach building a financial structure and a sexual structure. And when I say sexual, that doesn't mean necessarily going out and getting laid. You can be married. You can have a serious girlfriend. You can date casually. It falls in all these models. I'm married. So that's okay. But these two structures that actually increase your freedom and increase your happiness and set a baseline for everything else. Okay. So I'll go into detail on each one of these. So let's go into detail on the financial side first. So the financial baseline in terms of alpha male 2.0 are it's basically this it is recurring income that is seventy five thousand dollars a year or more in us dollars and i'll explain all this in a second as i go through it seventy five thousand dollars a year location independent which means you're not tied into a city to do it on less than 30 hours per week to maintain so let me go through those numbers first thing seventy five thousand dollars a year why that number they have done numerous numerous happiness studies on this and they've done, the last time they did this in a big way, they uh, surveyed 400,000 people on happiness and what made them happy or not happy or less happy and how much money made them happy and other aspects of their lives. And they found out, and it's always almost the same number every time they do this, around $75,000 a year is what makes most people the happiest. In other words, if you make less than $75,000 a year, you will probably be happier, empirically speaking, if you made more money. So people who make less than $75,000 a year say, oh, money's not important. The data shows that that is incorrect. If you made at least 75,000, you would be happier than if you made 50,000, for example. Now, some guys, and I'm in this category, this smaller category, guys, you might wanna make way more than $75,000 a year. I certainly do, and that's fine too. But the baseline minimum is $75,000 a year in US dollars. So if you're outside the United States, feel free to convert. And that is, by the way, pre-tax. That's not after tax, it's before tax. $75,000 a year, okay? Second thing is location independent. So the, the income comes in regardless of where you are, where you live, where you're traveling, or where you're staying. So you can go literally anywhere in the world you want and there's no drop in income. And we know for a fact, and we know this, 
People are less happy when they feel like they're stuck in a singular city or a singular region that they can't move. When you make a decent amount of money and you can go anywhere you want, it's awesome. I've been to 12 different countries in the last less than 12, less than 12 months. I travel a lot and I can go wherever I want and stay for as long as I want. I can go anywhere I want and stay there for six months and have no dip in income while I'm gone because I'm location independent. And even if you like your city, some guys say, well, I like where I live. Great. Are you always going to like it? Are you going to like it for the rest of your life? You're never going to want to move ever. What if something bad happens to your city or your country or your region? Don't you at least want the option of moving? Again, we're talking not only about freedom, but about long-term protection and long-term right. stability. So that's the second aspect, $75,000 a year, location independent on your own business. So if you're an employee of a company, you're not free. Even if you love your job, you're not because your boss and your company control your schedule. You need to control your schedule, which means you, have, you need to have your own business or businesses. And you don't want to work long hours for those businesses. So the, the objective is to have the 75,000 location independent income come in on less than 30 hours per week, <clears throat> excuse me, once the income is established. If you have to make, or excuse me, you have to work 40, 50, 60 hours, 70 hours, the rest of your life, even if you make a lot of money, and I got a lot of buddies like this, are you long-term happy? No. No. I've been there. It, it's miserable. So have I. I've been there too. And it was, it was terrible. I'd rather make almost half the money and, and have freedom of time. Yep. So you, it's not just about making money. That's only a, a part of it. It's making money on low hours if you choose. Now, I work a lot more than 15 hours a week or 30 hours a week, because, but I choose to. I have the choice. I don't have to. It's an option that I take. So you want options. So that's the financial baseline. I'll give you the woman baseline, which is a little more interesting. So the woman baseline is, is alpha male 2.0, this is the controversial part, is based on non-monogamy. The reason for that is if you are, two things, if you never have sex, you're not gonna be happy. We've already established that. Mm -hmm. If you're only allowed to have sex with one woman, particularly if it's for the rest of your life, that also will not make you long-term happy. Now, some guys would say, well, wait a minute. If I married Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> I would be happy. And I could be as monogamous and I would never cheat and I would be happy for the rest of my life. <clears throat> You're half right. You'd be really happy for a while. And it might be years. But here's the problem. <clears throat> You're a guy. Yeah. You are biologically wired, hard-coded to want certain things. Whether or not you believe they are societally appropriate or not, that's a separate topic. But you are hard-coded to want certain things, to desire certain things, and to feel, in, to feel um, constrained or frustrated if you don't get those things. So eventually, even if you are married to or have the perfect girlfriend, perfect girlfriend, perfect wife in every way, you will eventually want to get sexual with other people. It's just, it's the way you're wired. It's how we are. Every biologist will tell you this. No, they won't say it very loudly because they're married too. So they don't want to, they don't want their wives, their husbands getting angry at them. I've written articles about this, how the biologists, when they talk about this and they're married, they say it very quietly. Yeah, we're not really monogamous creatures. We never have been. But it's true, it's a, it's a scientific biological fact that you are not a monogamous creature. Human beings are pair bonding creatures, but we are not monogamous creatures, two different things. I am pair bonded, I am married, and I'm very happy, but I'm not monogamous. I'm allowed to have sex on the side when I need to. So, so is your wife also allowed to have sex on the side? She is, she is okay. if she wants to. Okay. And that's one of the biggest questions I get. Guys go, wait a minute, whoa, wait a minute, whoa. I'm cool doing it, but I don't want my wife doing it. Right. This leads into a bigger conversation that we could have. I'll, I'll summarize it, <clears throat> is that you should, marriage settling down with a woman should only be for men over the age of 35, at least 40 is even better. If you're a young guy, you don't want to settle down with a woman. That is a huge life mistake. That's, that's a terrible thing to do. Therefore, you will probably be ending up with, in, in terms of waiting to your 35 or older, you'll probably marry a woman who is probably also older. So my wife is 40. She just turned 40 this, this weekend. I'm 40. Hold on, I keep changing. 47. And she's a 40 year old woman. Do you think a 40 year old woman is on Tinder looking for dudes or out at bars? No. Now, if she's a 22 year old girl, if you marry a 22 year old woman who's really pretty and very extroverted, yeah, she's going to play with other guys and that's the way it goes. But should, should you marry a 22 year old girl? No. So if you follow the other aspects of the system and this gets very complex, but I'm, I'm just summarizing it. You are protected against most of this because women are not men. Women don't have the same biological needs as men, particularly as they get older. Whereas we're guys. If you get into your 50s or 60s, are you going to just not want to have sex anymore? No. no, we're guys. It's just how it is. Again, biological factors. But I could go into detail about that, but that's a good question. But the answer is yes. 
if you have a relationship where you say, I can have sex with other people, but you, sweetie, you can't, that is not long-term sustainable in the real world, in the Western world. I guess you could move to some of the Muslim countries and do that. There are some countries in Africa, that, you know, you could pull it off kind of, but in the Western world, that's not an option. Yeah. You ha it has to be open for both. But again, if you do this correctly, you'll be with someone who doesn't want this because of her age and the way women are and various other factors, but good question. Okay. Um, let's see. So being specific about the non-monogamy baseline, that means you are having sex with two, so not zero, which is no sex, it's not gonna make you happy. Not one, that's monogamy, that won't make you long-term happy. By the way, monogamy will make you happy for a while. So especially if it's a new relationship, it's called NRE, new relationship energy. It's when everything's exciting and fun and oh, this person is so great. That's when monogamy works great. It'll make you very happy, but that's a temporary honeymoon period. It doesn't last right. forever. It lasts for a while, six months, year and a half, what have you, three years. Eventually over time, you're gonna want something else. So the baseline is two women, not 27 women. Uh, I'm not a pickup artist. I'm not one of these guys who thinks you should be banging 12 different chicks all the time. And no, I, especially if you're older. I mean, I'm almost 50. I don't have time. I don't, I don't have that desire. But 12 women does not mean zero women or one. It means two. So that means you're having sex on a regular basis within a six-week time frame with two women that you consider at least cute. So here, there's a very specific definition for this. In terms of how you view women and every man is different, and we all like different things. There's no such thing as an objective, perfect looking woman because every man's gonna have a different opinion about what is beautiful. So if you have women who are cute and really hot, okay, you need to have these two women be at least cute. If they are women that you find average looking or below average looking, I'm not talking about anything subject or objective, I'm talking about what you think. If you're having sex with women that you don't find attractive, again, it's not going to make you long-term happy. It'll make you happy for a while. And sure. it won't make you... So it's important that these two women are women you find attractive. They don't have to be gorgeous. They don't have to be supermodels. They don't have to be 19-year-olds. They can be any age you like as long as you consider them at least cute. So those are the two baselines. You have two women in your life. Oh, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, you can have serious relationships. You can have marriage. You can have a girlfriend. You can just date or you can be very casual. There's four different levels. I could go into the terms, but I don't want to confuse you and give you too much information. There's different terminologies for these levels. But any type of relationship that you want as a man plugs into this model, into the Alpha 2.0 model. I've had all of them. I've had casual, very casual relationships. I've had dating. I kind of like this person or like these people relationships. I've had serious girlfriends and today I'm married. All under the Alpha 2.0 model and thousands of men all over the world are following this model and having a great time. And it's also not only just having sex, it's having low drama relationships where you're not fighting, you're not getting into arguments. You're not, today, drama is a standard part of any just typical relationship or marriage, arguing with your girlfriend, arguing with your wife. That's just part of the deal. Under the Alpha 2.0 model, drama is at a very, very absolute minimum. Matter of fact, if it's a more casual relationship, you can actually have zero drama. If you're married, you're gonna have some, you have a little bit. Most married guys have this much, I have this much. So you can't get away from that if you live with somebody, because that's just, that's how it works. It's the denied dynamic of living with someone. So those are the two baselines. Let me get into more specifics. Let me pull up my notes here about each baseline. So the first thing is, <clears throat> let's talk about businesses. So the first thing is you want two to four small businesses. Okay, you don't want just one business because if you have one business, what happens if you go out of business? What happens if they make a new regulation? What happens if the economy changes? What happens if... They invent a new thing that puts your business out of business. My grandfather, one of them, had a business that was thriving. <clears throat> he had three locations, and it was a calculator repair business back in the early 80s. Well, what happened in the 80s? They invented computers, and he was wiped out. He was screwed. So you want to have several companies, two to four, and that's what we teach, two to four businesses over time that are selling something completely different to completely different markets. So in my case, I have three companies. I am a business consultant. I do time management, strategic planning, and things like that. I work with several industries like the, the sports industry, biotech, and a few others. I have this business here, Lifestyle Design for Men, Alpha Male 2.0. That's an online business where I have coaching programs and eBooks and podcasts and online courses and things like that. And then my third business is a marketing company where I do marketing for IT companies, marketing for tech companies, where we do their marketing for them and we get a percentage of the improvement. So as you can see, those are three businesses that are selling three completely different things that have nothing to do with each other. 
and that's by design. Right. So if every, so let's say, here's a question I get. Hey, Caleb, what happens if they reg, start regulating business consultants? And they say, the government says, all right, you need to pay a, a licensing fee of $50,000 a year to be a consultant. Okay, bam, I lose that business. I still have these two. So I'm upset, but I'm okay. Sure. Versus if I just had this business, I'd be in big trouble. So another one is, um, hey, Caleb, you talk about dating advice in this business. Are you worried, aren't you worried that they make, make that illegal? So now you can't discuss dating advice because it's anti-woman or something, okay? All right, great, let's say that happens. This business is gone, I still have this business and this business. So again, we're not talking just about freedom, we're talking about protection. So that's the first aspect. You have several companies that have multiple streams of income coming in that all add up to $75,000 a year or more if you want it. Structured so you only need 15 to 30 hours a week to maintain that and it's location independent, okay? The other aspect of that is the business models we teach is called the Alpha Tupano business model is that you have no employees. I have a staff, I have a staff about 14 people, but I have no employees. When you hire employees, you invite the government, the tentacles, to kind of suck onto your business, like suck onto your face, kind of like that baby in the matrix, where the government comes into your business and tells you how to run core aspects of your business. Of course. Right, of course. How to hire, when to fire, who to hire, uh, the payroll structures, all those things. So you avoid all that paperwork and all that hassle and all those taxes and all that, by the way, um, legal risk of getting lawsuits and things like that by just refusing to have employees. In the modern era, you don't need employees. You can use virtual assistants. Yep. You can use subcontractors. You can use interns. You can use family members. Um, I've worked with women I've dated. You can do all kinds of stuff. So I have a staff, I have help, but I have no employees. Yeah, so we do some I What's use that? a virtual assistant for, uh, for my podcasting company. Um, he does a lot of the stuff for me, and that way I don't have to deal with any of that employee mess that the government uh, brings out. And he's, he lives in the Philippines, and it works out great. Yes, I have several employees in the Philippines. I, employ, I say employees, helpers. Right, right. right. I call them helpers, staff. I call them staff. Right. I've got, and they're fantastic. By the way, because of geo arbitrage, and this is an old Tim Ferriss thing, this isn't anything new, you can hire people in other countries often who have master's degrees, mm -hmm. who speak as well as I can speak, even though they're foreign, and they charge $8 an hour, $13 an hour, $15. It's incredible yeah. the level of service you can get. That doesn't mean you have problems either. You can have problems and you can have in turnover just like in any company, but it's very different than when you have employees. Especially you, you live in Europe. You guys in Europe, I mean like France, try to fire an employee if you live in France. Ugh. I mean, it's hard enough in the United States. It's right. worse than France and places like that. So that's the other aspect is no employees. Also, you want to have businesses that you can start for $0 if you choose. So my Black Dragon Alpha Male 2.0 business, uh, that is a multi six-figure company today. And I started that business for, I believe the number was $34 back in 2009. Um, I paid a little fee to a website hosting service and I bought a single domain name for like $9. And the total was $34. That's a six-figure company today. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to get started. Now, for those of you guys who have more assets or more money or access to more money, you can start your business and spend more money on it. That's fine. If you want to buy things like advertising and things like that, you'll get to the money faster if you spend more money, but you don't need to. So this is a location dependent, high work, high margin, excuse me, low work, high margin, location dependent business that you can start for very cheaply. And that's why you can start several of them if you want. So that's kind of the bottom line model for the Alpha 2.0 business structure. You can't just, if your goal is long-term freedom, you can't just start a brick and mortar business or start the traditional online business and just not give any thought to these things. So the structure is actually conducive to location independent income that doesn't require a lot of work to maintain, if that makes sense. Right. Sure. So let me look here. I think uh, that's what I wanted to talk about for business. Then I'll, then I'll cover the woman's stuff. Let's see, I'm just checking my notes here. Um, yeah, so let me cover woman stuff really quick. So that is also, so you have a system for your business and you have a system for your woman life. Mm -hmm. So that encompasses two things, two basic core skills. Most men have neither of these skills. Some men have one of these two skills and you need both. The first skill you need is, for lack of a better term, pickup skills. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a pickup artist, but I've worked with a lot of pickup artists. I've been in that world for a little bit. And those are skills where, instead, if you're uncomfortable with the word pickup, just think in terms of finding new women to bring into your life, into your romantic life or your sex life. So some guys are just fine in terms of relationship skills. 
but then they get divorced or they have a breakup and then they're like, oh my God, now what do I do? I, I don't know how to find somebody new or I don't know how to find someone new who's high quality or I don't know how to find someone new who's pretty. Mm -hmm. And then because they don't know how to bring new women into your life. You need to get to the point where you can confidently know for sure that you can bring new women into your life whenever you need to, even if you don't need to right now. Right. So in my scenario right now, I'm married and I have two women on the side who are my friends who I see. And so right now I don't need any new women. But what if I get divorced? What if my wife dies? What if my two friends move away? What if, what if, what if? These things happen in the real world. So you can't rely on a model where you have one or two or three women and you're going to stick with them for the rest of your life because they'll stick with you for the next 67 years. It's not how human beings work in the modern era. So you need the ability to know how to bring new women into your life. There's four different ways to do this. And I'll just over them really quick. One is online dating, which is what I teach. Another one is day game, which is where you meet women during the day, like just walk around at grocery stores and coffee shops and things like that. One is night game for you younger guys who are more extroverted when you go to bars and clubs and pick up girls. If that works for you, if that's something you enjoy, great, that works. And the last one is social circle game. So that's when you meet women through your social circle, your friends, your work, women you meet through your family, not your family members, but women you meet through your family, you meet Church, them day whatever. Yeah. Right, right, right. So you want to master one of those four. Whichever one is most conducive to your personality and your age and where you are in life. I'm an older, busier guy, so I like online dating. Uh, I don't like night game because I'm in my late 40s and I don't want to go to a dance club. So it depends. Now, if you're a younger guy, night game may be great for you. But you, sure. the point is you need to master one of these four. And you can pick which one it is. It doesn't really matter. So that's the first set is pickup skills. The second set you need to learn is relationship management skills. And so if you're dating multiple women, even if they're casual, you need a certain skill set on how to manage these women and manage these relations. I don't say manage these women. You don't tell women what to do because alpha male 2.0, one of the cores is you never tell anybody what to do. You live your life. And if people want to come along with you, great. If they don't, they should be with somebody else. I never tell my wife what to do. She is just as free as I am to do whatever she wants. So when I say managing women, I really mean managing these relationships in a way where the women will stay with you for a long time, even though they know you're having sex with other women and you don't have a lot of drama or arguments with these women. Most guys don't have either of these skills. They have no right. pickup skills and they have little to no relationship management skills. Right. There are some guys who have, who have a lot of one. So like these pickup artisty player type guys, they're really good at getting laid, but as soon as they get into a relationship, they're terrible. They have fights, they have drama, they sure. cheat, they get caught cheating. It's a mess. And you've got the inverse. You've got the typical nice guy, the typical beta male type guy, who's really good when he's in a relationship. He's very attentive. He's just a sweetheart boyfriend. He's a great husband. But as soon as she dumps him or he gets divorced or there's a problem and now he's alone and he's single again, he doesn't have any pickup skills. He doesn't know what to do. And he goes, oh my gosh. I remember being that guy when I was in my, oh, mid to early 20s. I was dating a woman and she broke up with me. And my thought literally was, and I've heard men say this, Oh my God, it's going to be six months before I have sex again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! It's going to be six months before I find a girl who likes me because I don't know what to do. You don't want to be in that scenario. You need both of those skill sets. Right. The last thing is, how are we doing on time? Oh, let's do five more minutes. Perfect. Yep. The last thing is you need ma freedom management skills, lifestyle design skills that encompass all of these areas. I'll give you a quick list really quick. Number one is to manage your taxes so that you pay the minimum taxes required by law. Absolutely. I make a good, strong six-figure income, and I pay a grand total of 14% on all my taxes. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. And it's all legal. I'm a, I'm a public figure talking about this stuff, so I have to double, double check that this stuff is all legal. So if the IRS, if you're listening, is legal, I promise. If, um, if you Google search after this webinar, if you want, Caleb Jones' blog, I have several blogs. Caleb Jones' blog, Americans' Highest Taxes. I have an entire article there where I go through all the taxes that Americans pay, the typical American at the typical income levels, taxes you see and taxes you don't see. And the typical American, I'm horrified to say this, but it's true, pays between 51 and 70% of his total income in taxes to either a state, local, or federal government. It's brutal. And that's a typical American. You don't want to do that because that means most of the time you're spending is earning money for the government. You want to keep your money in a legal way. So you want certain skills we teach where you drop your taxes to as low as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. First one. 
Second one is time management skills. I'm a time management consultant. That's my day job. So you need to, when you're balancing different businesses, different women, it's a relatively complicated lifestyle. You want to make sure you have the time management skills to manage that stuff at a baseline level. You don't have to be a wizard like I am with stuff. I actually track all my time. I, I time all my time. I change my different time categories. I'm a time management nerd. You don't be like me, but that you want some, a baseline of time management skills. Sure. The next one is international lifestyle. If international is important to you, if that's something that is of interest to you, living abroad, doing business abroad, dating women abroad, I do all those things and have done all those things. I have business interests all over the world. That's another aspect of managing an international lifestyle. That's optional. You don't need to do that if you're Alpha 2.0, but you have that opportunity because you're location dependent. Right. Another one is investing skills and saving skills. You need both of these things. Very, very important. You don't want to just make a lot of money and burn through it. Another one is sexual skills. You need to be good at making women feel good. Otherwise, they won't stick around with you if they know that you're having sex with other women. You need to not only be a nice guy, but you need to make them feel good. And most guys are very bad at this. They have no idea what to do in bed. They just kind of, you know, do their thing and they're done. Right. Last one is, well, there's two more. One is daily routines, having a daily routine, a daily where you do what you do in the morning, the afternoon, the evenings to maximize your productivity and maximize your freedom. And the last one for men over the age 35 is anti-aging to make sure that as you age, you look well, because as a non-monogamous man, you don't have the option of just letting your looks go to hell as you get older, because right. you'll always be needing to attract new women. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have to look like Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise, you don't look like, but you have to have a decent level of looks sure. throughout your life. Um, if you are interested in any of these things, I have a lot of resources, but the primary one is the SMIC program. That is my coaching and podcast program, where I actually coach with you one-on-one -on -one directly through uh, various means through a video. We have podcasts no one else gets. We have topics on both men and women. We do both of those things. We have a private forum. We do personality testing. So you figure out the best way in which you work, the best way in which you function in your work. And it is the entire program is designed to get you to the point where you can accomplish $75,000 a year or more location independent and having two women in your life. Now, you may say, I'm only interested in one of those two things. You may say, look, I'm married and I'm fine. I don't care about dating multiple women. I just want to take my income and make it location dependent. Great. We can help you do that. I do a lot of that stuff. We do a lot of that type of consulting. Or the other way around. You may say, um, hey, I got plenty of money. I'm cool at my businesses, but uh, I need a lot of help in my dating life. Mm -hmm. Great. You can pick one of those two if you wish. That's perfectly fine. Totally up to you. If you go to joinsmic.com, that is the website where you can take a look at this program. It's a month to month program. You can cancel whenever you want. There's no long-term commitment. If you would also just want to get an overview of this stuff, if you want to go to alphamalebook.com, that's my primary book, The Unchained Man, it's $7. And it's 440 pages. It's a lot of information. And so either one of those resources uh, are there for you if you choose. And I don't want to go over time. How are we doing on time? Um, it's, uh, you got about a minute till uh, we want to start Q&A. Sure. Um, well, that's really it. I mean, we could start it now. I, unless, okay. unless you had a question or need something clarified, I, I talk very quickly. So. Oh, no, no. You, you've been great. And this has been just crazy fascinating. I've been, just been riveted here. I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you doing this for us. I do sure. have lots of questions coming in from the audience. So let's jump right. to those. Go for it. One of the questions uh, looks like from Caleb. Do you have recommendations on the best types of location independent businesses and businesses that you can start with virtually no, no startup costs? Caleb, I love your name. Good name. That's my name. So uh, the best, it's a very general question. So I'll give you a, as, as specific an answer as I can give you. The best location independent businesses to start are ones that appeal to a very narrow niche. So for example, uh, I'll give you the opposite example. Guys will come to me and say, hey, I lost 60 pounds. So I want to start a fitness business, an online fitness, but I want to teach people how to lose weight. Terrible idea. Do you know how many thousands of websites and thousands of YouTube channels are doing exactly that? Right. That, because that's not niched. Instead, what you want to do is, and this is a real example, you want to, I'm just, this is just an example. I'm not saying literally do this. If you instead said, I'm going to start an online business where I show Chinese men living in the West who are over 50 on how to gain muscle mass. Now, it sounds funny, but that's very narrowly niched. You will make a lot of money doing that very quickly because the more niched you are, the more money you'll make, the more you can charge for your products and services, the less competition you'll have, you'll be perceived as an expert almost immediately, and the more return repeat business you'll get. Oh, and it's easier to find your prospects. So you want to niche as narrowly as you can. I don't teach dating advice. That's too open. That's too not niche. I don't teach how to get rich. 
That's not niche. I, I teach a very specific lifestyle for a very particular type of guy. Even in my business consulting and other stuff, I try to niche as much as I can. Those, big, those are the best location independent businesses to start by far. Gotcha. Okay. Good so uh, Mike asks, I think I've heard you say that you're not advocating polyamory in the past, which some call a three-way marriage. Am I correct in that you do not support that? And if so, why? I support polyamory if it's not, if you're not living with the women. So polyamory is a form of non-monogamy. And in my opinion, any form of non-monogamy is better than monogamy. Anything is less bad than monogamy because monogamy doesn't work long-term for the vast majority of human beings. Right. So if you want to be polyamorous, great. I've been polyamorous. If you're talking about polyamorous marriage, where you are actually living with two wives, dude, do you want two wives? Just, just think about that. I, mean, I can barely I, handle the one I've got. <laughs> holy crap, dude. And I love my wife. My wife's, do I want two wives in my house? Right. Uh, now, if you want to give it a shot, you can. I know of a handful of guys who are pursuing things like this, sure. but I don't recommend it as a lifestyle because it's very difficult, very complicated to keep a happy, low drama lifestyle when you're living with multiple women. Instead, do what I'm doing. Live with one woman and have friends on the side. Much easier. Any guy watching this webinar can accomplish that. Okay. Um, we'll go to uh, this question. I'm not sure who it's from. Any top choices for living out of the country or countries to avoid since you've obviously been around the world? So that is also depends on your objectives. If your objective is uh, cheap places to live, then you want to go to places that are cheap but are on the rise. Thailand is very good. Mm -hmm. Cambodia is very good. Colombia is very good. These are these are cheap, inexpensive countries to live, but they're on the rise. There are some places where it's cheap and inexpensive, but they are their shitholes, and they're not places you want right. to live unless you're in there for an adventure. If your priority is money and business, then you would move somewhere to Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Southeast Asia, in some cases China, because that's where all the money is going over the next few decades, the money is moving, we're watching this right now, it's moving away from the West and toward Asia. So if your focus is money, you'd be in Asia. Um, I'm gonna be, I haven't decided yet, I'm moving out of the country in 2021, I'll spend most of the year out of the country, I'm almost there now. Um, it'll be a split between Dubai and New Zealand, but those are my choices based on where I am in my life and my priorities. So it really depends on your priorities. Okay. So this is a, and this question is from CJ and it's kind of a long question. So I'm going to go through this quickly. Right. I've been, I've been successful in growing my small social media marketing agency to four clients on annual contracts. It's $4,000 a month in sales amounting to about 2000 a month in profit. He outsources all the actual labor. Right. He'd like to get six more clients so he can do just nothing for 50 K a year, but he finds it difficult to get in the mindset of cold calling because he has together about a hundred business decision makers information, which is time consuming. And then, you know, hundreds of cold calls and usually get one appointment. Um, he has a really high close rate, so it does work, but it's really hard to get motivated to do the work. So his question is, how do you recommend that he gets motivated to actually reach his goal? First thing is you want to design your business in a way where you attract business so that you don't have to hit the telemarketing that hard. I believe strongly in hitting marketing very hard. So you and I are on the same page, but at the same time, you want to design a business where the business you attract the business through things like SEO, free content. If it's a podcast, YouTube videos, I do blogs, I do all kinds of stuff. So you're, so it's easier to actually, so you don't have to market as hard as often because some of the business you get organically. So that's the first thing. Second thing, you can outsource that. So for my marketing company, I outsource the lead generation. I don't outsource the sales. You can do that too, but that might be beyond your ability or beyond your budget. Instead, you can outsource the lead generation. So you can hire a virtual assistant in a low cost country like the Philippines mm -hmm. to make your hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls to screen those people when they say, yes, I'm interested based on the type of client you want. And then they hand you the highly qualified, very warm, hot leads. And then you just call them to close the deal. It's exactly what I do in my marketing company. Right. I don't make hundreds of phone calls. I don't have time. I'd rather pay someone $10 an hour, $20 an hour, what have you to make all those calls and just talk to the decision makers. So that's what I would do. And it sounds like you're making just enough money to be able to do that. So that's what I would do. Be a good way to scale your business quickly for sure. Correct. Let somebody else do the hard work for cheap money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so next question comes in from Aria. Um, a lot of men seem to bristle at the idea of fair polyamory, where men and women both can have multiple partners if they so choose. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those men about their insecurity and chauvinistic views of women as property? 
Well, some of it isn't chauvinistic and some of it is. It depends on the guy. Some of it is biological too. So women are jealous, men are territorial. There's a slight difference. Men, you kind of already said it. That we, they, men, as a biological default, view a woman he's having sex with as his property. Uh, here's what I say to those two guys. I say to those two guys. I say two things to those men. There's a lot of those men. Number one, if you don't want to do it, if you don't want to have a non-monogamous lifestyle and you want to go monogamous, what is your plan? What is your long-term plan? What is your specific plan? And they always go, uh, or they say, well, I'm going to marry an 18 year old virgin and she'll never divorce me. Okay. No, that's not good. Luck. Good luck. Right. So the problem is you can say you don't want to do a thing, but then I want to know your very specific plan for what you're going to do instead of that thing. And that starts to get men, that gets men thinking like, oh, okay, God, he's right. What will I do? Uh, Hmm. So it's not, it's not like you have two viable options. Which one do you, in my, in my, at least in my view, right. it's not like you have two viable options. You have one option that you know for a fact will not work long-term period. And you have another option which will work, but it'll make you temporarily emotionally uncomfortable for a little bit. And that's the second thing is it'll make you emotionally uncomfortable for a little bit. When I first started doing this way back in 2007, 2008, the first relationship I had like this, yeah, I got a, she was a younger woman and she was hooking up with other guys a little bit. Mm. And I, yeah, I got really uncomfortable. But you know what? After a year, I didn't care. And today I don't give a shit at all. I don't care at all if that happens because I'm accustomed to it. The other aspect too is what I said earlier. If you skew toward more older women, the odds are very high. They won't want to hook up with other men. They don't want to do that. There are exceptions, yes. But the odds are decent that women in their 40s don't really want to go out and play the field and have multiple boyfriends. They go, ah, too much work, guys. No, thanks. So as you get older, this becomes much easier. Mm -hmm. If you want to play around with younger women, you can do that too, but that should be casual anyway. You shouldn't care if you're a guy who's 40 and you're hooking up with a 20 year old. Great. I've done that. A lot of that. That's great. But you shouldn't care what she does. She's 20. Of course. That's, that's my general answer. Okay. Next question is from Matt. He's asking, is it truly possible to have location independent business in all industries or might he have to do something that he doesn't enjoy in order to do independent location independent work? It is very rare to find a industry where location independent work is impossible. I've heard of a few bizarre scenarios, but you can, this is something I've done for many guys and something we've done for many guys. You can take an existing, even a brick and mortar location dependent business and convert it to location independent income. It might take a year or two, but great, it's fine. So, so the you answer hire, is- You can hire somebody to manage the physical location and you do everything else remotely. Thing. Right, sure. that's the easiest thing to do. And then when you start suggesting those things, you get the guy ego thing, well, I, I don't want someone managing my company, that's mine, and they won't do as good of a job as me. And that gets back to the ability to emotionally delegate tasks as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. Right. So really your enemy in terms of creating location independent income is not the industry and it's not your business, it's you. It's your mindset and your emotions about letting go of certain things. Okay. Um, another question here about living out of the country. It sounds very expensive to spend several months a year out of the U.S. Do you have any advice on how to manage living part of the time here and part of the time out of the country and how to keep those costs down? If, if the part of the time out of the country is in Paraguay or Thailand, it's not expensive. It's super cheap. Right? You will be shocked at how cheap it is to live in other countries. Even if you just go to Mexico certain parts of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So no, the only expense you've got is that plane ticket. Yeah. And you can go literally anywhere in the world, just about round trip for 1200 bucks. Wow. And that's a one-time click. You go there and then you come back, especially if you're doing business in that country, then you can, in many cases, check with your accountant, you can write off these expenses. So mm -hmm. now it becomes even cheaper. So no, it is not expensive unless you choose to live or spend time in an expensive country. Mm -hmm. My example is I love Hong Kong. It's my favorite country in the world, my favorite city in the world, but it's very expensive. So at one point I was planning on moving there and I went, you know what? It's too expensive and the summers are too hot. I'll just spend a few weeks there a year, a few months there a year and live in other places. So you can adjust where you want to live. That's the beauty of doing this, but it's not expensive. You will save a lot of money doing this if you do it correctly. I actually have a friend who has spent the last two years traveling in Asia, you know, to Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, and living incredibly cheaply. He'll send pictures of how cheap things are. And he does it working a few hours a week by uh, teaching people English, uh, being an English tutor. Um, Digital he, nomad. Yes. Professional travel. A lot of guys do that. Yes. So a lot of guys. It's great. And it's, you, you are shocked at how you get shocked at how cheap this stuff is. I'm still shocked. I've been all over the world. I'm still surprised. Yeah. 
Uh, David asks, when Caleb said, and I think you might have answered this, but I want you to clarify. Sure. Uh, when Caleb says it takes $75,000 a year to be happy, does he mean gross or net? Gross. Well, pre-tax net. So if you have a business, your net profit that you take home and put in your pocket before you pay taxes. That's, that's, that's the number. Not gross, gross sales or gross revenue. That's useless. After your expenses, the money you take home, but you haven't paid taxes on it yet, that needs to be 75000 or more. Okay. Got a couple more questions, questions. here. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting one. How does a guy explain to his daughters that he's living the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle? Because, I mean, you, I could see how, you know, some women might view this as, as, as questionable. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter. She's 21. I raised her part-time. I said I divorced. I got divorced um, when she was eight years old. So she spent every weekend with me plus many weeks a year. Um, since then, she is now 21. Yes. Here's how you do it. If, if first of all, if she's very young, don't explain it because there's too many sexual aspects of this. So there's no reason to explain this to your 10 year old daughter, your eight year old daughter, just leave it alone. Don't have women around your daughter. So I had a very specific protocol around when I was dating lots of women, I wouldn't let any of them around her or I would let one special one who was long-term around her. And that was it because you don't want to see your daughter parading around a bunch of women. When she gets older, if she asks questions about this, the core concept of Alpha 2.0, when you explain this to women, is that it is based around never telling women what to do. So I never tell any of the women I date, including my wife, including the women I dated before this, what to do. I say to them, you can do literally whatever you want. Hmm. You can do literally whatever you want. If you do something that really upsets me, I'll just leave. Or maybe I'll say it once and then leave. I'm never going to say, don't do this, don't do that, because I want a low drama lifestyle. Guys who want to tell women what to do, fight a lot. And I don't have time. I like to be happy. I don't want to fight women. I Absolutely. want to enjoy women and be happy and smiling and have sex and do all that good stuff. So that's where women go, oh, oh, okay. That's when they start to kind of like it, depending on the woman. Okay. Um, Eric asks, is it that men have not adjusted to the modern era, that they're still pursuing monogamy, or is there a different reason? Yes, that's primarily it. You have been, we have been societally conditioned since the dark ages, since around 600 BC or so, to desire monogamy and to view monogamy as the, the best way to do it. Now, the conservative guys, the traditional religious guys are correct when they say pair bonded, two pair bonded people in a long-term relationship is best for raising children and it is best for society. That is correct. Again, that's empirical. That's true. But you don't have to be sexually monogamous when you are pair bonded to your wife. You can still get some on the side if you need to. There's no law that says, I mean, there is, I and mean, actually there isn't, but there's no societal or biological rule that says if you're pair bonded to this woman, you can never have sex with anybody else. No, you can have sex and then come back and then have sex and come back. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's, that's yeah. just as stable. In some cases you could argue it's more stable because sure. you don't have cheating and arguing and, and all the jealousy around traditional monogamous relationships. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I've been happily married for 14 years. As a matter of fact, my wife and, and my relationship is stronger than it's ever been. Great. Um, That's great. I, yeah, it's it's fantastic. And, Love it. But let's say that somebody were in my situation who's been married for many, many years, mm -hmm. um, but they've decided that they do want, if they're in, in a monogamous, monogamous relationship, mm -hmm. they've decided that they want to talk to their wife about branching out. How would you recommend doing that? I have an entire book called How to Convert to an Open Marriage at <laughs> open-marriage.com. Uh, the okay. bottom line, I mean, it's a whole book. I'll summarize it really quick is that you sit down with your wife and you say, what we've been doing hasn't been working. I love you. I want to stay married to you for the rest of my life. I don't want to leave. I love you. And I want to be with you till the day I die. And what we've been doing is not working. So as of this date on the calendar, you actually give her a calendar date. I am going to start sleeping with other women, but before you freak out, honey, I will wear condoms. No one will know. I'm not going to bring anyone over to the house. You kind of go through all the objections before she says it. You right. don't ask for permission. Most guys, what they do is they look at their arm and they say, um, so what if you think if I start having sex, what do you think about that if I start kind of, no. You just tell her what you're going to do and then you let her make the decision. Right. And yeah. if she says, no, that's not going to work, do you just uh, move on and find it? You have a decision. Then you have a decision right. to make. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, so Mike asks, um, you sort of hand wave religion earlier, but religion is an important part of many people's lives. Yes. How does your program fit within a Christian worldview? I was raised Catholic. I went to a Catholic school. I have read most, not the entire Bible, but I have read most of the Bible. If religion makes you happy, 
you should embrace it and it should be a core part of your life. I've got guys who ask me, can alpha male tupanos be religious? If it makes you happy. I, there are a lot of people I know who are very religious, including some people in my family, and they're very happy because of it. There are also a lot of people I know, men and women both, who are very religious and it makes them very unhappy. It makes them very uh, judgmental. They look at politics and they frown all the time about what, how horrible everything is. So if your religion makes you less happy, you need to look inward and see what's going on with your life in terms of where you're focusing your time and focusing your emotions. If your religion makes you happy, do it. Christianity, whatever, I assume you're probably a Christian, that's great. If your Christianity honestly, honestly makes you happy, stick with it. It's very important. I completely agree with you. If okay. it makes you happy. Great. Uh, so Tommy asks, um, have there actually been studies about child rearing in monogamous versus poly poly polyamorous homes? I wasn't aware of any, and offhand, it sounds similar to the notion that gay men and women are inferior parents. Yeah, there are um, there are some studies regarding polygamous marriages, children being raised where one guy has, like these um, these Mormons in Utah, where one guy marries like seven different ugly women, and he has like 27 children. Uh, there are some studies about that. I do not, again, I do not endorse that model. People in those environments will tell you how, how horrible it is. Not horrible, high drama. That's sure. it's nonstop arguing. It's hard on the kids, it's hard on the wives. There are no, yet, there will be, there are no studies, that I, big ones that I know of, who discuss raising children in a non-monogamous marriage like what I'm talking about. As far as I know, there will be more as time goes on, as more and more people do this. But for the moment, there's not a lot of information on it. I wish there was. Okay. Next question is from Leah. Uh, is this primarily for heterosexual relationships? You haven't mentioned homosexuality much. Can that work within this system? Yes. Now, here's the interesting thing is a lot of um, gay men and lesbian women are already doing this. Hmm. They already kind of embrace the non-monogamous lifestyle. It's very hard. And I'm making a generalization, but, I'm, but this is generally true. I know a, I, have, I work with and I have a lot of gay friends. Gay guys don't like being monogamous. They, they hate it. Even in their marriage, they're like, why? And, and, and gay women tend to be more monogamous, but um, this is irrelevant of gay or straight. And, and again, I don't really need to teach this to gay men because they're probably already doing something like this. Okay. Another question from Matt. Do you have any idea what the age range of men who are able to continually live the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle? Is it a young man's only lifestyle or is it something older men could do and enjoy as well? age 18 to 79. So we have men from age 18 to wow. 79. Once you get to age 80, I get hazy on it. I don't have any men that I know living this lifestyle post 79. Mm -hmm. I have men in their 70s doing this. I have men in their 60s wow. doing this, 50s. I have young guys doing this. The only difference is the seriousness of the relationships with women. So younger guys should not have serious girlfriends. They should not get married, period. I tell guys, you shouldn't have a girlfriend until you're 30. And in my parlance, that'd be OLTR. Date women. You can even date women you like. Don't have any serious committed girlfriends until you're 30. Don't settle down with a woman until you're 35, in my strong opinion. Um, but that's the only difference. I've got guys at my seminars who are in their 70s. I plan on doing this. I'm almost 50. I plan on doing this for, literally for the rest of my life. I will not stop. I'm not going to suddenly click in a monogamous and then go get a, a corporate job when I hit 57 years old or whatever. I'm going to do this the rest of my life. So yes. 18 to 79. Okay. Looks like we got time for about one more question. So Casey asks, what would your best one piece of advice be for a young kind of nerdy college student who's having trouble with women? I was a kind of nerdy guy too. I didn't go to college, but I was a kind of nerdy guy too. One piece of advice, start with optimizing your physical appearance. So you stand in front of a full length mirror and you look your at top to bottom and you say to yourself, would I have sex with me if I was a girl? And if the answer is no, you make a list of all the problems and you start to address them. If you have dorky hair, get a better hairstyle. If your skin looks terrible, start moisturizing. If you're overweight, start losing weight. I've lost 40 pounds. If you are really skinny, go to the gym and get some muscle mass. If you're dressed like a nerd, dress like a dork, dress better. Men are terrible at dressing. We have to be taught how to dress. When I got in my 30s, when I started doing professional speaking, I had to hire a, an image consultant to show me how to dress because we don't know how to dress. We're guys. Women know how to dress. We don't. You may have to have someone help you. Women help show you how to dress or God forbid, go to an image consultant and have them show you how to dress and improve your fashion, which men are naturally bad at. But just go down the list and improve all the aspects you can, including your body language, the way you walk, the way you sit, the way you stand. 
when you get that kind of, when you get that better, even if you look better to you, your confidence goes up, your outcome independence goes up, and that makes it a little easier to start taking the techniques to meet new women and be more successful with them. But start with how you look. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Caleb, thank you very much for, for this. This has been just incredible, riveting, and, and I've really enjoyed this. Um, for everybody who's, who's attending, if you missed part of this or you want to go back for a refresher, um, you can go to alpha.freetalklive.com and uh, we'll have the, the full video up at that website. Um, Caleb, do you want to uh, have any last parting words, give uh, websites or, or anything like that? You bet. You Join smic.com if you want a lot of help and a lot of information for a very low price or go to alphamalebook.com if you just kind of want a general overview of everything, mm -hmm. either one of those. And I'm happy to help. If you want blogs, my articles, blackdragonblog.com is my woman blog and Caleb Jones, that's C-A-L-E-B, Jones Caleb Jones blog.com. That is my business investment international blog. Both of those, those are updated every week. Beautiful. You're all over the place. I love it. I'm all over. Yeah. Caleb, again, thanks so much for this and um, take care of yourself. You bet. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.